Benjamin. The not boss, uh, secondary, secondary in command, Bateman. I am the boss. <laughs> Won my first match back. Um, good to see you. Good to see you, Cass. I'm excited to talk magic. We got a the gathering. action pack episode tonight. We definitely have some action. So a lot, a lot of stuff is happening right now. Uh, last week we released our preview episode. Uh, if you have not checked that out, we really launched a card. It's cool. It's fun now having seen all the cards that come out because we talked pretty thoroughly about like a mage craft based Mardu ascendancy deck and they've like printed way more cards that would be dope in that deck and so I think that like could actually just be a thing and we'll go over a little bit today they've also at this point we've seen all of Lorehold and uh, not all of Lorehold but a ton of the Lorehold cards like we had Lorehold day yesterday which was so fire and then uh today was Prismari which we got a lot of that and then we were at the time of day that is now we're getting the international side of the blue green Quandrix I'm gonna have to learn all these aren't I for when Wednesday, which is a little interesting because our card is supposed to be in silver cool, but it's also not like been a strong fast rule, um, but they're definitely showing a lot of cards. Also, something that's happened since last week is they've uh, launched Magic Arena on I iOS, which has definitely increased my uh, ability to play Magic even more than it was, which Arena helped and, and obviously all of our live streaming. So that's been really cool. I played through one game on Arena two mornings ago. I was like, all right, let's see how how well this functions how clean it is how good the download is and it was like perfect no issues at all it was great i was like oh no this is uh this is a disaster i i finally deleted like two months ago three months ago i deleted clash royale off my phone i got rid of it because okay. i had stopped i had like stopped caring but i just would do it like intermittently mm. just like to kill time i would I'd find 15 minutes and i'd just be doing it and i just like would never really advance and i was like this is a pure waste of time I don't know anyone anymore who's playing this other than Andrew Guy, who like is a professional commentator for the game. So like I wasn't trying to do it professionally or create content about it. It was just like a time waster. And so then I ben, saw this. And I was like, know, ben doesn't know how to have a hobby that he doesn't make into a job. <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's just if I'm going to do something, if I'm going to do something, I know I could do something other than Clash Royale that has more value that I'm more engaged. In. I wasn't even engaged in it anymore. Yeah, so yeah. Arena now being on my phone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I haven't uninstalled it. It's there, but like I just I finally just stopped playing Clash Royale. Arena being on my phone, I've definitely jammed. So the one thing is like deck building sucks. And but the cool thing is you can on your desktop deck build and then all, all your decks will exist. And deck building and draft isn't too bad because you have such a limited amount of cards. I've just been drafting. That's like the majority of what I'm doing. There's like a core set, all three core sets at once draft. It's surprising they didn't like have like jumpstart or like a weird draft format become reavailable during the moment that they like open this up on phones as a bigger deal because it's like i'm like clicking around i was like oh there's not that many i'm like sick of caldheim draft already and there's not that many other formats to draft and like the weird corset trio is not what i would say is like Oh man, I definitely want to draft three different corsets that have no synergy with each other a lot but the ability just to like jam games in bed that's like the main thing is is i have played a lot of tft which is the the auto chess from riot games which is like league of legends characters but you like draft them and then you like fight against each other um recently because i can play it on my phone as i'm like going to bed or like as whitney's watching tv as we fall asleep being able to now play arena in that moment is like amazing yeah i mean i'm sure it's something i'll probably start doing more of especially Especially like I I want to I want to like get invest because like I was playing a ton of historic that's like where I was playing I haven't played much for the last month or two but I'll probably play some games on my computer first would be my guess to kind of get re like situated with like what people are playing and try to build something new I mean I played a game with my blue black rogues deck that hasn't been updated in like two months and I definitely won so that deck is probably still really good it's like full of good cards yeah my like I like am super stoked to start playing historic the biggest problem with like this is this is my point. Like they almost should have waited two weeks to launch it with Strixhaven coming out, because like I don't want to invest in historic or standard right now because an entire new set launches in two weeks. And maybe the point of this is they wanted to launch it ahead of time so people will get involved, but it's not going to be so hype that the like thing is going to shut down day one. But I don't like the, the fact that all of the mystical archive cards, not all of them, but all of them, but seven are going to be legal on Arena is going to so drastically change what historic looks like. Strixhaven is obviously going to drastically change what standard looks like. 
then I'm just going to wait to play like to build constructed decks until all these cards are available because I don't want to spend a bunch of wild cards on a deck that like in three weeks changes. So where can I see the full list of the mystical archives? Like where, uh, so where, all is, of where them, is that? If you just go to, uh, I use mythic spoiler, but I think you can also use scryfall. You can go to myth and there's all there. I think like uh, also iPad it's, it hasn't, people are like, Oh, it's really hard to see the cards or move stuff around. That hasn't really been an issue to me. I know that maybe that's an issue on Android or was, or maybe, maybe they fix it. They've come up with some solutions like we're getting the beta tested on phone version. Cause they've dealt with it on Android, but uh, it, it, it's, it's a lot easier than I expected just kind of to the only problem I have is deck building. That's like the only thing that I'm like, this is a pain in the ass and it's partially a pain in the ass because I don't know the names of cards as a person, especially yeah. like random limited commons. So I have to like click on each one and hold it. And if I accidentally click it, like removes it from your deck, which a, yeah, I, I would get better at over time and B when you get to construction, it's a lot easier. But once again, because the whole format is basically rotating in, in three weeks because of what they're announcing for historic, it's going to be pretty wild. God, there's so many sweet cards. So you're saying that all these mystical archive cards are going to be legal and historic other than seven? Yes. Do you have anything else you want to say about about it being on arena before we move to the next subject matter? Um, just that better late than never, um, I think is, is my opinion of it. It's I think that, you know, it's funny when you talk about evolution not in human evolution, but you just like talk about the evolution of the way like things are done in the world. Like putting plus um, one plus one counters a, when a creature enters play that has a higher power than the creature that's already in play. <laughs> not not evolving. My point in saying the thing about evolution is that I think in life when things are comfortable and there is like a sort of powers that be that control things mm -hmm. like a, like a sort of a majority, it's hard to get things to change sometimes. So like magic is a game that should have and could have functioned similarly to many digital TCGs. And with Magic Online, they kind of did. They just never invested in the part of it that was going to put them on the same level as some of their direct competition, who over the last five or six years have really taken off, like a Hearthstone or some other people like this. Like, it was a clear template for what Magic could have been. It could have been mobile a long time ago. But I think because Magic had this foothold of being a paper game, and it was so successful as a paper game, and it was made them so much money as a paper game. They just were like, we're not going to invest all the resources in making this thing available in six months. Like they should have probably six years ago. They just didn't because like they were selling enough product and it was a very successful thing. And I think there was this idea of holding on to some of the identity and not just jumping on the bandwagon all these other games were doing. But because of COVID, because of the, us being all forced to stay home and things changing so drastically, they had to adapt and they had to respond in a way that I think it's like you're seeing with a lot of like work from home situations. People didn't necessarily want to have to go into the office, but they couldn't make a strong enough case for why they shouldn't have to. But then the COVID has shown it. It's forced us. We've evolved. When this, when this is over, I don't think people are going to go back to work in the same way they were before. And I think that digital magic and mobile arena is going to be a way more prominent piece of the magic landscape than it would have been. Who knows if this even would have happened on the same schedule that it happened now, but Obviously, we've found ourselves in this situation, and, and that's where we are. So, yeah, just just an interesting thing to pay attention to. I really just think better late than never because it looks great. It functions really well. It's exciting to be able to play Magic on your phone. I I'm happy about it. Yeah, uh, it, like the fact that I, you know, it's it's weird because this is the one moment where like I have had Magic Arena on my desktop. So like that, being able to have something on my iPod it hasn't been a priority for the last year. But we're going to get back to the world we're traveling is important. And that's going to be such a big deal, being able to play arena just like on my iPad in an airport or in Hong Kong or in New York or wherever we're at. Dallas is going to be sweet. Just like downtime between meetings at like a toy fair, just <laughs> drafting is going to be great. It's definitely a, a step in the right direction, as, as was it being on Mac, right? Like they keep making the right steps in that direction. There's like there's something about not playing magic with people that I like less for I sure. Agree. Like I, especially like. And, and, and Historic is better, but like I just I, I jammed a few games of Historic with the I have the Gideon Pact deck and then played those drafts. And like there is an emptier feeling. It's not as fun as like when you're playing against a person live. You, it's, it's just like a little bit more grindy, which I don't like, which is not something to say bad against it. It's just something that like as far as critiques go, it's never going to replace in-person magic. I'd much rather play a commander a game with you on stream or like I, I got to uh, a buddy... I played sealed time spiral because he's vaccinated and I was vaccinated. I'm, I'm now vaccinated. So we got to play time spiral sealed against each other. And that was really cool because it's like in-person magic. Uh, he beat me. His pool was much better. But in-person magic, I think is never just going to replace digital magic from an entertainment perspective. I even know that like online over the weekend, they did the world championships or whatever big tournament they did. And they had 
a like one game in middle of game one, the system shut down. So they had to restart the match from the beginning. So that that match was lost. There's like they still haven't figured out a way to like, oh, no, save a board state in arena which for for pro level play which is something they need to like fix it's insane oh my god i would have been so if i was if i had the advantage at that point i would have been so upset so yeah so that's that's the thing that happened <laughs> so they need to figure that out like magic being an esport is still being weighed in and, and covid affected all of this negatively so i'm not surprised uh that there's some learning there's definitely comments out there also on like wizards cut a lot of its prize support last year and then made more money than it's ever had. And we've talked about that in the past where like on the podcast, does that mean that they don't need to spend that money to make money? Or does that mean that they like screwed over a lot of people that like had qualified for tournaments that deserve a chance to win some of that money? So it's, it's a weird dichotomy that we don't need to get into because I don't understand the way pro play works at the moment as well as I should to be able to talk upon the different intricacies of it. But Magic Arena on iPad, on iOS, it's available now on the go, and I plan on jamming a lot of games. I think it's really sweet. For those, uh, please uh, like and subscribe. As always, the like button is really important. It helps us succeed. Uh, we just need to get more views, uh, make it so YouTube shows these videos to more people. So it helps if you guys can hit that like button. And if this is on YouTube and we use this as a split point, make sure to check out tomorrow. We'll be releasing the next piece of content. will be us going over what all of the Mystical Archive cards being introduced in Historic means. This has been a production of Time Traveler Media, sending podcasts into the future.